I want to get a sense of how you guys are seeing the current day and also the year ahead. I want to get your Wexler of the day. Ladies first, Tiffany, let's start with you. Well, Frank, my Wex word of the day is disco. So I would describe 2023 as a party and everybody showed up, right? So the S&P 500 is on a nine week winning streak. We've only had three other uh, longer streaks than that in the past 50 years. Uh, 2023 is the 12th best year in the S&P since 1980. So uh, I see that disco ball spinning right now. There we go. Tiffany's in a, a party mood. Jeff, I want to come over to you. What's your Wex word of the day? Well, I wish we were in studio together, Frank, so we could bust out some moves together with that disco ball flying. My word of the day, possibly the word of the year, is resolute. And to give a little hat tip to my English uh, teacher back in high school, this is an adjective meaning unwavering or determined. And I think we saw that unwavering determination in investors back in August, September, October. But I think investors will need this again because I think we're going to have a cautiously optimistic year again in 2024, but it will not be linear. It will not be a straight line. So you need to have resolution and be determined in your investing. All right, so uh, Jeff, I want to stick with you. Let's look ahead to this day ahead, the last trading day of 2023. Two numbers to watch once we get to the opening bell. Uh, 48.18, that would be a new intraday high for the S&P. Right now, we're actually above that level, but the question is, uh, where do we get to? Actually, we're not. We're at 47.83. I apologize. Um, but 48.18's intraday high, 47.96 would be a record close. Do you think we hit these marks? I think we do. I think we vault above 4,800, and it's remarkable to see. We talked a lot about this on WEX, Frank. We talked about this chase, this moving to the end of the year. There was $6 trillion in cash and cash equivalents. And what's interesting is that if you look at the S&P 500 from a relative strength perspective, which really helps us measure momentum, it's been overbought since the middle of November. So it's been basically overbought for the last 400 points, which means that a lot of people are waiting for a pullback, but it doesn't have to come. So I think the market continue to move higher. We're obviously gonna be contingent upon the Fed consumer strength, but I think you have to understand what momentum has done, downside and upside in the last three years post COVID, you have to be invested to participate in this, but you have to be selective, you have to be careful, but with the VIX down around 12 and a half and all time highs, I don't see anything stopping or anyone closing the door on this party in 2023. You know, I want to correct myself, Jeff. Uh, great points there. Uh, I was looking at the market close. That's where the market closed yesterday. Right now, in the futures, we're at 48.35. Obviously, a lot You're of good, that, buddy. You're good. Yeah, a lot of that can change the opening bell. But same question for you, Tiffany, as well. The two numbers to watch again, 48.18 for an intraday high, 47.96 for the close. Do you think we reach both? Do we think we reach one? What do you think? I think we've got a good chance at reaching both um, and, and really kind of thinking about I, I really do agree with Jeff. I, I don't see this momentum kind of slowing down as we, you know, uh, on Monday will be officially it will be the first official day, a trading day of 2024. And while I don't expect 2024 to kind of outpace 2023, I do expect another positive year. Um, we've got lots of support, Fed policy, increased corporate earnings, which, which we believe is going to happen. Um, and so, you know, we, we really do uh, really see this uh, this party continuing. Uh, while we're talking about this party, again, disco is your word of the day. Uh, I want to get your take on the latest delivering Alpha Investor Survey and outlooks and strategies for the first quarter and beyond. The nation's leading institutional investors, top strategists, and CNBC contributors like both of you were being asked which of the weakest sectors in 2023 have the most upside potential next year. 56% say healthcare, 24% say energy, 12% say staples, 8% say utilities. Um, Jeff, going to come to you first on this one. What do you think out of this group? Well, if you're looking for a trade from an uh, elasticity perspective, something that was beat up is biotech. Biotech really fell out of bed. So I think you're going to see 2024, some of these IPOs come back, some of these mergers come back, some of these acquisitions come back. So I think biotechs, you can play that in ETF, XBI. There's a variety of different ways to play it. But biotech has a chance to come back if you're looking for kind of like a, a Dow, a dog of the Dow or a nasty of the NASDAQ trade. A <laughs> dog of the Dow, Nat. Uh, that's a funny trade right there. Tiffany, same question for you from that Delivering Alpha survey. Any one of those sectors you think see a big rebound next year? Yeah, I think uh, both energy and healthcare. I know those those were um, uh, the top two. I think that they really stand a chance to kind of bounce back next year. I mean, look, energy was really beat up, uh, and so I, I I absolutely think that there's a there's um, space for it to to kind of push forward. All right. Let's talk about some of the picks you guys have for us. We'd love the picks as we enter a new year. Jeff, I'm going to start with you. You're talking a little bit of your own book, uh, ticker ESSIX, and you're also uh, very bullish on tech. Give us a sense. Uh, talk your book for a second, but out of tech, what's your top pick? 
So as the manager of the Essential 40 Stock Fund, obviously I want to have that essentiality theme. So think Peter Lynch 2.0. These are names that you want to use in everyday American life. So, But you think about Magnificent Seven, it's not just those, Frank. You think about the tilt towards tech. So it's Intel. It's also Palo Alto Network. It's IBM, Big Blue. We forgot about Big Blue, but now all of a sudden they're coming and emerging into the cloud business. So there's names like that, even an Oracle, which you think about Oracle only up 33% on the year. You have to find a way not just to be diversified in tech, but also still have an okay. overweight to tech. So that's where we want to be. Tiffany, want to get to your pick, Shift for Payments. Yeah, so Frank, you know, we're always bullish on tech. And so we really... Uh, we were really looking at the health of the consumer, which really kind of pulled forward and really supported I know, growth this year. And we expect that to continue at least into the first half of next year. And so we, we're kind of playing that with like payments, you know, so shift for payments. Um, it's a processing, it's like payment processing for small and large, and large um, merchants. It has a, a global client base. Um, they really kind of offer this like single kind of turnkey solution. Um, okay. And, you know, their, their subscriptions are, are um, you know, really grew, right. especially in their, in their SkyTab POS. So it's up over 33% this year. All right. We expect it to continue.